do you do you want me like to let me know when when you start recording? I think we're going, so go ahead. Okay. Uh, so let me start the presentation. So hey everyone, uh, I'm uh, my name is Tiago uh, Tiago. I'm a back engineer for the Create team, and I, I want to to welcome you to the to the first uh, deep dive of the Create team, uh, where we are going to be talking about the full mirroring uh, system. So let's jump right into it. Uh, so the, the purpose of this talk is for me to share my knowledge uh, of the full mirroring feature with the entire GitLab team and to make this uh, deep dive session uh, a reference for everyone that might need to work uh, with full mirroring in the future. Uh, here's the, the table of contents. Um, I'm going to give you a couple of seconds to quickly skim through it. Mm. Moving on, uh, we will not talk about though. Um, we will not talk about the mirroring through SSH, uh, push mirroring, and bidirectional mirroring uh, due to time constraints. Uh, so, yeah. So, what is pull mirroring? Uh, it's it's a feature that is available on uh, GitLab starter and bronze tiers, and basically what it does is it automatically pulls the changes from an external repository into a, a project in GitLab. Uh, we, we, we make an effort to keep uh, uh, healthy mirrors synchronized uh, with the external repository at least every 30 minutes. Um, and a user is also able to update more often by using a functionality that we call update now, uh, which, uh, and we also make an attempt to, to handle common failure scenarios uh, gracefully. Uh, it's very useful uh, for teams that have uh, a canonical version of their code in an external uh, code hosting service and want to have a secondary version hosted on either gitlab.com or uh, their own instance. So, for example, uh, users can have their code hosted on, a, on an external code hosting service uh, and let's say that they want to leverage our CI service, uh, they, they can set up a pull mirror that is kept in sync and it runs all the pipelines uh, that were configured for that project, uh, which is a really common uh, use case for, for this feature. So let's quickly do um, a demo. Uh, so right from the start, we have uh, um, a really basic project that I created on, on GitLab.com. And I have a bare bones project that I created on my own instance. And so we're just going to quickly copy the HTTPS URL from this project and go to settings repository. <laughs> and uh, we're going to go to mirroring repositories. And uh, right from the start, you, you start seeing a lot of options that, you, that, you, that are made available to you uh, by using the, the mirror repository. So let me just copy the, um, the URL. And you can see that this URL can either be using HTTP, HTTPS, SSH, or Git. Uh, all of them are supported. Uh, you can also choose the, the direction of the mirror, so if it's either a pull or a push. In this case, we want to synchronize into my, my own local instance, not push towards the, the, the external one. Uh, so we are going to select a pull. The password, the, the authentication method will not be necessary because we are dealing with uh, public repositories. If it was private, we would probably uh, require um, an authentication. And then we have a couple of other options, uh, mainly the, the mirror user which is going to be the user that will be the author of every event that is created due to the mirroring. Um, there are also options such as uh, overrides, diverge branches. This makes it so that uh, when you're trying to mirror and both versions don't have this, uh, the, the, both versions have like a diverse branch, it will overwrite that one instead of just failing and not mirroring at all. Uh, the trigger pipeline, we already mentioned what it, what it does and the only mirror protected branches. So based on the, the specific set of rules that you put for protected branches, you can only mirror those, um, those, those branches. It's really useful, for instance, for uh, something that we call a bidirectional mirroring that I won't get uh, into uh, on this on this talk. So let's go ahead and click on the mirror repository. And as we, we can see, it created a mirror for us. And if we refresh, 
be updated straight away. Since this is a really small project, there you go. It updated 13 seconds ago. And if we go to the, the main page of the project, uh, you can see that we, we now have the, the contents of the, of the external repository. And another cool feature that we have is, for instance, if I go to the main repository and make a change into one file, So if I go onto my, my, my local instance and I go to the mirroring settings again, there's this button that, that we make available called the update file, which we can click to basically update the mirror as soon as possible. So let's click that. Tiago, what does that do exactly? Just set the next execution time to now? Yeah, exactly. It sets the next execution. So the next uh, project that will get picked up by the scheduler, uh, we'll get into, into more detail uh, further down the, the, the line, but basically what it does, it, it, it passes everyone in front of the queue uh, so that it, it, it's uh, the next project being picked up. And we can go, we can go onto the, to the dashboard and you'll quickly see that, the, hey everyone, the update, uh, the project has been updated. So yeah, on with the presentation. So there are a couple of key factors that make that kind of make this feature uh, all work. Uh, so th these are the ones like the, the capacity, the transition of state, uh, the state management, and uh, determining when a mirror uh, update will, will be attempted again. And I want to share with as well like some key metrics to, to kind of give you a scale of how this operates on jpod.com. So we have over 50,000 50, uh, mirrors being updated uh, within the last 30 minutes. So it's a, it's a pretty large scale. Uh, so let's first talk about one of the key factors, uh, the capacity. What it is, it's, uh, it's basically a Redis set that contains uh, the IDs of all the projects that are currently uh, waiting to get updated or are already being updated. Uh, the total capacity uh, is, is a fixed number that can be configured by, by any GitLab instance administrator. And it is, it is basically used as a way of limiting the size of the site we do so that we don't schedule uh, a lot of projects at once. It's, it's mostly like a bottleneck that we, that we, first, that, that we need to do. Um, if you want to, this will, but if you want to, to, to have your mirrors um, updating as frequently as possible, uh, I suggest that you put the, the capacity a bit, uh, uh, a bit higher than the, the concurrency that, uh, that Psychic uh, has configured. Let me see. Uh, that, will, that will ensure that Psychic always has job, uh, jobs to perform and it will, in essence, translate into more frequent updates. Uh, if, if you want, if, on the other hand, if you want to have less frequent updates and if you don't want, you don't want to have psychic like, performing jobs all the time, you can lower the capacity uh, and instead of having the, the bottleneck of the, the actual psychic concurrency uh, being the bottleneck, you, you will instead have the, the capacity uh, as a bottleneck. So the next one will be uh, split transitions. So uh, why would we pick one over the other? Like what, what, what do you mean? Why, so, uh, why would we have uh, the capacity be the bottleneck instead of sidekick? Uh, basically, as I, as I mentioned, so we have a configured concurrency, um, uh, 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 the, the allowed concurrency for sidekick. And basically, there's this uh, sidekick uh, queue that we have. And it, uh, it's basically managed by the capacity that we have. If we make it lower and, and the concurrency is higher, it means that it, it will pick up every job and the, we will run out of things to, to run in the capacity. Instead of just having, always having like project IDs ready to be scheduled uh, at any mom moment's notice. Does that make sense? Yeah, so ideally they're the same or similar to just keep Sidekick busy I, ideally, they will be they will be a bit higher just for um, just to keep psychic busy. But if you make it uh, way too high, 
like if, if you make it like five, uh, five million, you won't make a difference because uh, like we, we don't have that, that many projects and it, it will only uh, translate into a, um, a bigger uh, side PQ instead, which is not what you want. And, and usually we recommend to have the capacity set to about, well, in the case of GitLab.com, to about twice the size of the actual concurrency Sidekick can take on at any time. So there's always a full queue of new jobs waiting for Sidekick to pick up. If you lower the capacity to the exact concurrency Sidekick can handle at a time, and once a new spot opens up in Sidekick, we first have to wait for the update on Mirrors Worker, which you'll see in a bit, to come alive again, detect that there's another gap in capacity, schedule another job, and only then can it be picked up by Sidekick, which means we lose precious seconds during which we could be updating another mirror. So the capacity we use to always keep that queue filled up enough, that there's always something new for Sidekick to do, uh, instead of us having to wait for Sidekick to be up, open again before we schedule something. But you'll see the code in a bit. I know that Tiago's gonna cover it. Yeah. Uh, so now, now, now let's uh, talk a bit about uh, state transitions. And, and by the way, I, I didn't say this at the beginning, but Feel free to interrupt me at any moment if you have any questions. I'm not currently checking the chat, uh, but we will have uh, a space for questions later on. Um, so uh, the state transitions. So the, the way mirroring works is divided by five states. Uh, we have the none, the scheduled, the started, the finished, and the failed. And each of them are responsible for, for performing a specific task. Uh, for instance, the scheduled uh, state will be responsible for actually scheduling the worker that will perform the update. Uh, the started uh, will mark uh, in the database the point where it actually started doing, uh, performing the update job. And the finished, the finished worker, uh, the finished state will um, mark the, the, the time where the mirror su successfully finished and, when, and sets the time at when it will get updated again. And the same for, for failed, but instead it will mark the um, the time where the mirror finished uh, unsuccessfully. This is this is also re uh, really useful information uh, to, to to use, as we'll see later on, uh, to find uh, mirrors that are in inconsistent states with the overall uh, system. Uh, for example, uh, a mirror that is in a started state but that doesn't have a psychic job running uh, attached to it. So there's also the state management. And basically, the mirroring system both, uh, has three, uh, three focal points that track the progress uh, of the mirroring. Uh, so that it's the database, the sidekick, and the Redis capacity set. Uh, the database basically holds all the information, such as the status, the job IDs, the, the timestamps at, at which uh, the, the mirror started and finished. Um, sidekick provides all the information about the, the mirroring queue, and we, we are able to know based on that, if, if a specific job has finished or, or not. Um, and with the, the Redis capacity set, uh, as I mentioned previously, uh, we are able to know if a project is, um, will tell us if a project is waiting for, for, for to be updated or if it's already being updated. Uh, of course, the, the objective is to make the system as self-healing as, as, uh, as possible, but there could be, there, there are some scenarios where the system doesn't uh, recover yet, and we have to do it. Uh, we have to perform an operation by hand, and we are planning on doing a merging test about it uh, soon. So, for example, if a project in the database uh, says that it has started, we can check that the, the, the job ID that is saved in the database and and match it with the psychic uh, the psychic uh, mirroring queue to see if it's finished already and. So if, if, you, if you see that the job has finished already and the project is still in the started state, it means that um, the sidekick wasn't, didn't basically finish and wasn't able to communicate the database with the database in order to transition the state to either finished or failed. And this is, this is a case that we, that we picked up and gracefully handled uh, as we will see later on. So uh, another another thing is uh, to know when should a mirror uh, get scheduled, and for this we developed uh, a formula uh, that basically takes into account the, the the time that it took to update a mirror the last time and the number of retries that were necessary to actually get a, a successful mirror out of it. So we can we can look into more detail into the formula. Uh, we we currently have this back off uh, period and the jitter. Because previously, this is a bit of legacy 
um, that that's currently in our in our in our code base. But the, the objective was to spread the load a bit more. But as you see uh, further down the line, you have the minimum delay and the maximum delay, which kind of bound uh, the the timestamps uh, a bit. The the main thing that I want to focus is the the retry count, which takes it, it's a huge factor in um, when we are actually going to, to update the mirror next. Uh, usually the mirrors finish finished work uh, in two seconds, so it's really fast. And in this case, uh, we, we are going to have uh, 30 minutes, uh, a 30 minute delay, which is, which is the minimum delay that we can have. And as I mentioned, we, we want to penalize mirrors that fail often uh, from running as frequently as the healthy mirrors. So we, wa we always want to, to prioritize healthy mirrors uh, of running. And if, if the, the, the mirrors for, for any reason reach a, a maximum number of retries, we are going to put it into a, a specific state of uh, hard fail, where it will, it will no longer get updated and will instead make a request to the user uh, to actually solve the problem um, by hand. So this is, this is a, a basic rundown of, of the workflow. So the scheduler will wake up every, every minute. It's a, it's a cron job. And we'll pick up all the mirrors that have the next execution due for an update. So previously to, to the current time that we are on. Uh, it will schedule all the mirrors until there's no more capacity available at the moment. And after each mirroring starts, uh, it will basically fetch all the changes from the provided remote URL and update the respective branches and tags uh, with the new information. After updating the mirror, uh, we'll, we will always remove that project from the capacity list and set the next execution time. But then we, 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 we will have like two outcomes. It can either finish or fail. And if it finishes, it clears the retry counter, basically sets it to zero again. Uh, and if it fails, it's, it gets implemented and if it surpasses a certain limit, as I said previously, it will, it will get a hard fail. So this is the basic uh, architecture uh, of both the, 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 state, the state transitions and the, and the workers and how they communicate. Uh, this, so you can see that we, we always start uh, with the non-state, but we transition into the schedule, then start it, and then it can either be a failed or a finished mirror, and uh, that will circle back into the scheduled state again. And in the, the life cycle, update all mirrors worker will get uh, rescheduled every minute to wake up. And it, it only communicates with the project's database. And it requests uh, the, 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 the mirrors that are ready to be updated and basically schedules the project import schedule worker for every, every single mirror. Um, and then that, that's, that schedule worker will as we, as we will see in the code base, uh, it will schedule a repository update mirror. It's the only purpose of that of that job. Uh, and then the, the update mirror worker will actually perform the work of updating the branches and the tags and all that. So so far, uh, are there any any questions? I'm not I'm not being able to see the, the chat for some reason. Are there any questions? Okay, so let's move on and do a, a quick um, code dive. Oh, okay. Uh, for some reason, you can see the, the, the chat. Okay, so let's let's do a, a quick code dive. So I have the um, I have all the files that are kind of important for the the whole new system to, to work. Uh, in, in our web ID. Uh, the first one that I want to touch on is the, the project import state. So uh, it, you can see, uh, the first thing that you can see is that the, the table name is actually called project mirror data. And this is also a bit of legacy code that we have. Uh, basically, this feature would previously only work for viewers, but we, we have since migrated uh, imports and ports as well to this logic. Uh, and every project will have a project import state. The reason why we decided to separate uh, the, the, the new reinforcement ports logic 
uh, into their own model was because the, the table, the project's table was getting too big. So reads and writes were, were, were getting a bit, a bit too expensive and we could make it a bit more lightweight this way. Uh, the second thing, the third thing that I, that I want to show you in this specific file is this transition here. So the transition from the finished or failed state to the schedule will actually perform this, this method called add import job that we can see here. So add import job over here that you can see that uh, if it's an import and the repository doesn't exist, it will actually um, schedule an import or a port, but otherwise it will be, it will schedule the repository update here, which is the, the actual job that performs the update operation. And we can also see the, the C uh, counterpart, so there you go. The super basically calls this, this portion here. Of, uh, it's either an import or a port. Another, uh, yeah, so this is, this is basically what it does. It returns the job ID and we update the current project with that job ID that will basically keep track, uh, uh, make sure that uh, when the job finishes, it gets cleared. And otherwise, if it's in a started state, we are gonna use this job ID to make sure that the job is still performing well. So going on to the, um, the EP counterpart of the project import state, um, let me see, let me see. So this, this portion, as, a, as I mentioned, you can see that we, we decrement the capacity when we transition into a failed or finished state and we increment the capacity when we go to a scheduled or started state. Uh, and again, from the started to a failed or finished uh, state, you, you will see only two differences. It's the increment we try count as opposed to the reset, we try count when we finish, and we will set um, the next execution timestamp. And on on the failed, we only set the last update that uh, when we actually finish, we set the last successful update that as well uh, to mark the, the successful update. So here, um, I I would also like to show you the actual method that uh, sets the next execution timestamp. It's also in the slides. But uh, yeah, you can, you can see here, uh, we actually use this method called base delay, like here, that has the formula that I showed you as well. Basically using the, the current timestamp minus the last update it started at, so the duration of the last year. On the project model, there's a, also this, uh, this specific scope, which is really useful for debugging purposes as well, but it's also used for, uh, for scheduling uh, here which is the mirrors that are ready to be synchronized. And we do this by having a preset, which we usually provide the, the time that we are in now. And we, we, we fetch the projects that, are, that have a timestamp that, pre, that is previous to that, um, that timestamp. Another module that is really important, uh, that basically is the core of the, of the entire feature is um, the, the GitLab mirror module. Uh, it has the logic of scheduling cron jobs, uh, managing the capacity, uh, checking the available capacity, and so on. Uh, so you can see here that we are configuring the cron job of the scheduler worker called update all mirrors worker. Uh, and it runs uh, every minute. We can also see that we have the logic of incrementing and decrementing the capacity and the method that, that checks the available capacity right now. On the, on the ready set. So now we are going to move uh, into more like the, the workers and how things get scheduled. And now that we have a, a, a better notion of how, how the, the transitions in, uh, of state work. Um, so in update all mirrors worker, the, its only task is uh, to, to, to grab projects that are ready for an update and schedule them and fill the capacity with them. So you can see here that we, we save the, the available capacity uh, into a, a variable. We fetch the projects that are, um, that are ready to be synchronized uh, here. And we do it in batches. And we take, the, 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 we take the, as many projects as we can uh, as the capacity lets us uh, take. And in, in, the, in the end, we just perform a um, schedule and import schedule worker for those projects that we just picked up. Uh, 
after that, we will transition into the project import schedule worker, which it's only like it, it's a really simple worker. It's it's only task is uh, to actually transition the project to a scheduled state, uh, which will be responsible for scheduling the the, the update mirror worker, which is actually the one that defines the, the work, which are, we are going to see right now. Okay, so the repository update mirror worker, uh, it's it, it basically transitions the project from the schedule to the started state, and then calls the, the update mirror service, which is the one that will fetch the remote and update the branches and the tags uh, from the, the external repository. At the end, it will it will finish or fail, and we handle those in those in these methods. So we either finish transition to a finished state or mark as fail. This method actually. Um, is possible for failing the, the mirror. It sets like uh, the error message and, and, and so on. So the the update uh, mirror service, which is the one that it's uh, that it's called by the, the repository update uh, mirror worker. It's basic. It's a it's a really basic um, uh, service. It, it basically just fetches the mirrors and then updates the tags with them. There's a bit of a bit more logic because of the, as we mentioned, that like the protected branches only mirror protected branches or uh, override diverged branches. So you can see the logic here. So only mirror protected branches. We can it, it defines if you should skip the branch or not, and uh, the the way we handle the diverged branches because of that feature as well is um, it's different. So the other uh, really important worker. That we have is um, it's it's also a cron job that is called the stuck import jobs worker. It runs every 15 minutes. Uh, don't get me slept by these 15 uh, 15 hours. This is just to as a mark for uh, the timeout of all the workers that are dependent of this uh, of this import uh, import jobs worker. So you will be sure that every mirror job uh, will time out. Uh, past uh, 15 hours of actually attempting to update. Uh, we are planning on, on, on decreasing this number, by the way, but yeah, right now is what we have. Um, yeah, one thing, one thing that, that you would want to know is the, the project with G, uh, job IDs uh, count. We are going to mark them as failed. This, this portion here without job ID is no longer possible. And I, I'm doing a merge request to remove this, this portion of the code base as well. So this method no longer is no longer uh, used. <laughs> but this portion here is actually really important. What we do is we, we, we grab all the projects that are in the scheduled or started state and check for their job IDs. And when we get the job IDs, uh, we, we actually use this method called uh, completed job IDs uh, that are like the sidekick basically keeps track of when, but we have we have internal tooling that keeps track of when a job has finished, and we can use that to check if the jobs for specific mirrors have already ended. And if they ended and we are in a scheduled or started state, uh, we should mark them uh, as failed here. And it's it's basically that. So yeah, back to the slide presentation. So, are there are there any questions? I know this is a lot of information to take in, so please bear with me. <laughs> okay, so uh, now now let's start uh, diving a bit more into the, the troubleshooting um, field. So here is an example of uh, an unhealthy mirroring system. You can see uh, by looking at, the, for instance, like. The project mirror updates overview and the mirror updates at least 10 seconds overview. You can see this huge mountain of projects, like 15,000 projects that are not getting updated uh, at the right time. And you can also see that it, it coincidentally, it, it, the, the, the project import schedule worker and the repository update mirror worker are not performing any work during those times, or at least very minimum work. So, in this specific case, what it, what happened was that uh, the stuck import jobs worker wasn't timing out, and that's why the, it was timing out. So we weren't able to actually mark projects as failed, and that's why after the, the situation gets solved, 
which is why you see this huge dive uh, in, in, the, in the project year updates that we do. Uh, and the scheduled start capacity stays the same is because we are not being able to mark those failed projects uh, as failed because the stock import job worker was by the um, So there's a link as well if you want to check uh, in a bit more detail the super final graphs. They are really interesting. Uh, and yeah, so for troubleshooting, what I usually do is I always refer back to the project import states uh, model or the project near the table and check the last error message, the retry count, the job ID, the last update uh, uh, timestamps. And yeah, well, uh, and it, it is really useful to, to kind of uh, graph that information into an Excel sheet or something and to kind of find patterns with it. It, it was really useful when I was developing this. Um, so you can also check the available capacity by, by using the, the GitLab mirror method. It, it has a lot of functionality that is useful um, and you can take a lot of inspiration from that module for debugging purposes. And you can combine this method with the project mirror to sync uh, time.now to actually see if um, there's, there's actually projects to fill the capacity and for some reason we are not filling that capacity or, or something like that. That might indicate that the scheduler is not working correctly, which is something that happens uh, in the beginning of this, uh, this feature. Um, so you can also you can also check the status of, of the workers for each mirror in the scheduled or started state. As I mentioned, we hold the job ID in the database for each uh, project that is in scheduled or started state. And those job IDs you can actually use this command called uh, GitLab site status job status uh, job ID and pass it to job IDs and it will basically tell you if they are completed or not. Uh, you can also retrieve the project ID, IDs that are currently in the red set by using the S members uh, method. It's useful uh, to do projects that, are, that could be stuck or with inconsistent information. For instance, uh, a finished or a failed project should never, should never be in the capacity. They should always be removed. So if for some reason uh, a project transitioned into a failed or finished state, it might indicate that uh, the service is not communicating well with the Redis, with our Redis. Uh, so for, for clearing uh, data inconsistencies, so when the database is inconsistent, so the whole point of us having like this distributed model of, of knowledge, let's say, is because we want to keep it, um, we want to make it self -healing. Way. And we want to, to keep this data as synchronized as possible. So, for instance, when the database is inconsistent with Psyche, uh, like a project can be in the database, uh, started in the beta the database, but Psyche already finished the job, uh, we, we can use stock import jobs worker or we can schedule the stock import jobs worker, uh, which will look at the job IDs maintained by this, uh, this GitLab Psyche status registry. And usually this happens when when the, 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 the actual update worker uh, finds out for, for any reason. Uh, you can also have the capacity set being inconsistent with the database and site. So for instance, if the project is finished, but the project ID is still present in the capacity set, which was the scenario that I mentioned previously, uh, right now there's no real self-healing way uh, to solve this. This has to be, uh, be removed by hand, uh, by removing the project ID from the capacity set. You can do it, you can do it by, by either running the decrement capacity and feeding it the project ID or just if, if it's something like if it's something that you're seeing that is occupying like the entire capacity, it might be worth just deleting the whole thing and starting from scratch. Uh, this this though should 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 be taken with its precautions because um, what what this basically will do if you remove all the project IDs from the, the, the capacity set, uh, you will basically say to the site to you, hey, you can schedule more jobs. So you will actually uh, increase the, 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 the site queue unnecessarily. Um, so now uh, let me show you uh, uh, what a healthy mirroring system looks like. And you can see that is a huge difference. So you, you actually see that uh, project import schedule worker and repository update mirror worker are consistently performing uh, jobs, 
uh, you see that the scheduled or storage capacity doesn't is not is not stale, so it's not stuck with, with projects. Um, and uh, the, 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 the two the two most important um, graphs that we have, which are the, the project mirror updates overview and the mirror updates uh, at least ten seconds overview, uh, are really healthy. You can see that the amount of projects that are that get ten seconds overview of an update. Uh, from the actual schedule state, from the actual uh, schedule time, excuse me, uh, it's minimal. It's really, it's really minimal. So yeah, these are these are also some some really useful links that I that I use all the time. So the documentation for the full new uh, system, the state machine active record documentation is also really useful because uh, the whole system relies on the state machine uh, state machine working properly. Uh, there's also some, some guidelines uh, to troubleshoot full new uh, made by the infrastructure team. And I'm planning on, on doing a couple of updates to, the, to those guidelines. And there's also an issue open to dynamically determine uh, a new update interval based on the total number of new. So we want to get rid of the lower bound and the upper bound um, scheduling times. And instead, we want to make it dynamically based on the information that the system has. Uh, there's again the the, the kind of engineering graphs that has a lot of information and please if you have any questions about engineering um, feel free to, to ask in the VAT uh, channel at any time. Uh, are there any any questions? So I think you said that the mirroring by default runs every thirty minutes. Is that a value that can be adjusted at all, or is that set at 30? Uh, I don't think so. The, 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 the minimum delay right now is, um, is, is set to 30 minutes. However, the maximum delay, I think, is some bigger. So that's actually a really good question. And I don't know if we probably should change it, because uh, as I mentioned, we are trying to make it dynamic, so getting rid of, of, of the minimum delay and the maximum delay entirely. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely Gonna, gonna discuss yeah, right now the minimum delay is not configurable, uh, but like Tiago said, the intention is, and then pretty much always has been, to have that kind of dynamically adjust itself to um, the actual psychic capacity and the actual time recent updates have taken, so that it never tries to update more than it can actually handle. But also that means that as the amount of, uh, if the amount of mirrors grows, but you never actually adjust your psychic capacity, automatically the time between two updates per mirror would go down to not overload the system too much. Uh, but we didn't have time to implement that st at some point when we did need to fix the dire situation with that combos in at the time, because we had far more mirrors than we were expecting and we were not hitting any kind of uh, reasonable update frequency on those. So we kind of implemented that hard-coded 30 minute limit. Uh, and we still haven't kind of made or found the time to, to switch to the dynamic approach we had originally wanted to be on. Um, so right now it's hard coded to 30 minutes, but the idea is that on GitLab.com, uh, 30 minutes is pretty much the ideal value. So even if we install the dynamic stuff, um, it would land on that 30 minute frequency. But on like a smaller instance, the update rate would be much higher. You would still want some kind of lower bound there so that you don't you know, try to update the repo every five seconds because it happens to be the only mirror in the system. So psychic can handle it. Of course, that's not somewhere you want to go either. Uh, but the idea is not for this to ever be configurable, as in just pick a number and GitLab will try, uh, but more for it to be, um, you know, GitLab will do its best within the resources you've given it. Um, because ultimately GitLab knows and has the information available to it to figure out what number it needs to be updating it so that it doesn't overload, and, but still uses uh, the capacity and the, the resources to the full, um, you know, to the full possible extent. And, 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 and uh, you, also, you also make available the update now uh, functionality, especially because of this. Like, you, you knew that there, there was going to be a delay, and if for, for any reason uh, a customer actually wants to update a bit more uh, frequently, you can also use that uh, that update now button uh, right now. Which is yeah, the update now functionality. Okay. I think Tiago mentioned earlier that we have the ability of, uh, you know, someone can choose to host their Git project somewhere else, but then use GitLab just for CI CD. And we have endpoint that will, uh, you know, effectively do the same thing that the get now button does. So you can call an API endpoint that will immediately uh, trigger an update, which, like Tiago mentioned earlier, effectively is setting that next execution timestamp now, uh, which means that, you know, the next 
pick up the update all mirrors work or we pick it up to be updated immediately. And when you set your GitLab project up um, to be a CI CD project for a project on GitHub, for example, we use the GitHub webhook, which will be called every time someone pushes to GitHub to automatically trigger the update now endpoint on the GitLab side of things so that um, the mirror will sync immediately and the pipeline will run immediately when someone pushes to GitHub. And we are actually smart enough to also report that pipeline status back to GitHub. So that's really a way of using GitLab CI, uh, just like you would any other standalone CI solution like you know, Circle or Travis. Uh, but we've built it on top of this mirroring functionality and that update, update now feature hooked up to that GitHub um, webhook. That was very helpful, thank you. Um, and can you review again um, how you determine when a mirror is hung? Can you just go through that again? I uh, sure. Uh, so there, there are so the, the, the most common case uh, when the mirror is hung is for some reason the update worker. So let me let me go back to the to the architecture. It might help you. So this this graph that I showed, the, this uh, diagram that I showed earlier, um, you can see that the repository update mirror worker is the actual job that is responsible for updating uh, the information based on, on what, the what we pull from the external repository. And this can actually, uh, it, it can happen that there's a timeout or for some reason the, the, job, I, the, the job crashes and we don't actually get to transition the project onto a finished or failed state. So it will stay in a started state, but it, it will still hold that job ID, uh, but the project already, the, the job already finished. And what we do to kind of catch these scenarios here is um, we, we have the, the stock import jobs worker, which I showed earlier uh, here. So we have this, this jobs worker that basically catches all the projects that are in the, in the started or scheduled state um, and grabs their, their, their job IDs. So let me, let me try and show you this quick. So we, we, we grab the, the job IDs for those projects, and, mm -hmm. and uh, we, we call. Let me try and find it. Okay, it's here. So uh, we, we find the, the, the job IDs that are already completed, and if it's completed, that means that we have a project that should be marked as failed because it shouldn't be started anymore. Like the job finished, so at some point there wasn't there wasn't the communication to the database to transition the project to the next stage. That makes sense. Okay, that helped. Thank you. Yeah, if, yeah. Again, if 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 you if you if there are like if you have any any other questions, uh, like feel free to drop by the the, the create channel anytime. I, I I can help whenever necessary. Okay, I appreciate that. I may have I may have some clients that um that will have questions like that. So I appreciate that. Thank you. So. Are there, are there any other questions? Okay, so if there are no other questions, uh, I want to thank you for, for listening to this, to this talk. And um, yeah, I wish you all a, a great day. Bye. Thank you.